Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are on page number five and we are in the process of solving the problem dealing with the notion of basic multiplication. In order for you to do your multiplication efficiently during the exam, in order for you to be able to do, the, do your multiplication efficiently, you must know your timetables. It's important, it is vital, it is absolutely crucial, it is essential that you know your timetables 1 through 12. And if you need some help with that, you can watch this series of basic math. Right here is a series of basic math. It goes from 1 through day, day 1 through 200. I would like you to watch from day number 1 through 12. Not all of them obviously, just the first 12 to learn the timetables in the event that you need help with that. Let's get going. So that's what multiplication is all about, is knowing your tables. We are on page number 5. Sample problems. Sample problems on page 5, number 1. 846 times 7. 846 times 7 and now as I as I've told you before if you have watched the first four days day number one through four you know by now that I've explained on several occasions that this is a multiple choice exam this is a standardized exam just like any standardized exam for anything at all for anywhere anywhere in the world it has certain weaknesses and your job is to exploit those weaknesses one of the weaknesses that a multiple that a, that a standardized exam has when it is put together in the form of a multiple choice exam is that the answer choices are usually put far apart. They are not very close to each other. Particularly in HESI and in T's, answer choices are very, very rarely very close to each other. Most of the time they are quite far apart. You must exploit that weakness. For example here, they are asking us to do 846 times 7. Let's not worry about 846 times 7. Let's find out, let's find out what is 85 times 7. And you will see where I am going with that. 7 5s are 35, 5 carry 3, 7 7 8s are 7 7s seven are 49. How do I how do we know that 7 7s seven are 49? Because 7 squared is a 49. So if you add one more 7 to 49, 7 7s, 7 7s seven seven are 49. 7 7s seven are 49. If I were to add one more 7 to it, 49 plus 1 is 50, and then another 6 would be 56. 7 7 7 7s are 50, 49, 7 8s or 8 7s, 8 7s are 56 we said, plus the 3 is 59, is 59. What do we do with it? Well, what we need to do now is to understand that here we have 846. Here we have 846, which is approximately equal to 850. 846 here, 846 is approximately equal to 850. You don't have to, you don't have to be very precise in the exam. 850 times 7, 85 times 7, we just found out it's 595, so 850 times 7 is going to be 5950. Now we are not quite done yet. The next thing we have to ask ourselves is, are we overestimating or are we underestimating here? Are, is the correct answer, is the correct answer is going to be something that is less than, a little bit less than this amount or a little bit more than this amount? We are multiplying 850 times 7, we were, we were asked to multiply 846 times 7, so obviously this is an overestimation. This is an overestimation, therefore it, it leads us to conclude that the correct answer, whatever it is, has to be slightly less than that. Has to be slightly less than that. That's what it is. We're done. Pick the one answer choice that's slightly less than 6,000 and you'll be all set. Let's do it out. Purely for learning purposes. You understand? As far as the exam is concerned, this should be sufficient. 6 7s, 6 6 are 36. And how do I know? So 6 6 are 36 because 6 times, because 6, six squared is 36. 6 6 or 36, if you were to add one more 6 to it, 36 plus 2, uh, 36 plus 4 is 40, and another 2 will be 42. 6 7s are 42, 2 carry 4, 4 7s are 28, 28 plus 4, 28 plus 2 is 30, 30 plus 2 is 32, plus 3. And 8 7s, we just found out here, 8 7s are 56, we said, 56 plus 3 is 59. There we go. This is the exact answer. And this is the answer that we said it's going to be 
it's going to be a little less than 59.50. Well, this is a little less than 59.50. We really didn't have to do all of these thousands. Had it been a real exam, we wouldn't have done all of those things. This is good enough. Just when, this, when they ask you what is 846 times 7, just round it to 850 times 7, find out the answer, and ask yourself is that an overestimation or underestimation, and then, and then pick the one that, uh, that, that comes closest to it. Do you understand? Let's do one more. Number two is 325. Three hundred and twenty-five. Because if you if you're hell bent on doing this thing properly, like a goody two-shoe, it will take you forever. It will take you forever. Times six. Times six. Again, this is very straightforward problem. Very straightforward problem. Just break it up. Break it up. Three hundred. Let's line them up so we can see it here. Three hundred times six. Can you tell me what three hundred times six is? 300, 3 times 6 is 18, 3 times 6 is 18, and then we have 300, so we have two zeros. We have two zeros, so just take two zeros. So that's 300 times 6. And the correct answer is going to be something close to it, but if you want to be a little bit more precise, we can carry on. So we figure out 300 times 6, now we have to do 25 times 6. 25 times 6, 25 times 6 is, how much is 25 times 6? Think, think to Think, think in terms of money, think in terms of money, dollars and cents, 25 cents represents a quarter. If I have six quarters, if I have six quarters, I have dollar fifty. Twenty-five times six is one fifty. That's it. This is the price precise answer. This is the exact answer. This is no different. This is not an estimation, this is not an overestimation, this is not an underestimation. That is the answer because what we did is, what we have done here is that they were asking for 325 times six. So first we figured out 300 times six, which is this amount. And then we figured out 25 times 6, which is this amount. Now if you like, you could do it out just to see, just to see what's going on here. Just to convince you that we will get this 325 times 6. And you will get the, you will see that we'll get the same answer. 6 fives are 30, that's 0, carry 3. 6 twos are 12, 12 plus 3 is 15, 5, carry 1. 6 threes are 18, plus 1 is 19, we get 1950, just like we said it before. Of course, this should not be a surprise, because what we did here is, instead of figuring out what 325 times 6 is, we, we, we broke it up into two simple manageable parts, it's, it's very easy to figure out what is 300 times 6, we can do it in our head, 300 times 6, we know 3 times 6 is 18, so it's 1800, because you just stick two zeros, and 25 times 6 is also very easy, you can do it in your head, 25 times 6 is 150. So it's 1800 plus 150, 1950. We didn't have to do all of this out on a piece of paper. Let's do number three. Let's do number three. Number three is asking us for 600. Let's tell you what, I'm going to do it in, I'll do it here. 653, 653 times 12, times 12. We're going to do it twice. We're going to do this problem twice and you will see in a second why I want to do it twice. Because I want you to learn, I want you to learn to do your multiplication like a grown-up person, not like a baby. You're not a baby. Let's do it like a grown-up person first. And then if you like, if you're hell-bent on it, we'll do it like a baby. Let's multiply this number by 12. We're not going to multiply it by 2 and then by 1. We're going to simply multiply it by 12. And you have to know your tables for you have to know your tables for 12. You must know your tables 1 through 12, as I said before. 1 through 15 is even better. But 1 through 12 is a must. 12 threes are 12 threes. 12 times 3 is 36. 6 carry 3. Stay with me in this story. It's very important that you stay with me in this story. 12 fives, 12 fives are 60. We are multiplying it by 12. We're not multiplying it by 2, we're multiplying the whole, this 653 by 12. 12 fives are 60, 60 plus 3 is 63, 63, 3, carry 6. 12 six are, how much are 12 six? We know 12 fives, we know 12 fives are 60. If you were to add one more 12 to it, it should get 72. And if you didn't know, if you didn't know it, just do it out like this, only takes a second. If you, if you know 12 fives are 60, now the 12 will be 72. 72 plus 6, 72 plus a 6. 72 plus 6 will be 78. 
And we hope and pray to God that when we do it out in the baby steps, we better get the same answer as this one. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do it in a traditional way now. First, we multiply by 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 fives are 10. 0, carry 1. 6 twos are 12, plus 1 is 13. Hold the unit place. Now we can multiply by 10 digit. 10 digit happens to be just 1, so 6, 653 times 1 is just going to be 653. So it's just 653. 6, 3, so far so good. 6, 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. And 7. What do you know? What do you know? We do not have to do it in two steps. Let's do one more. Problem number 4. And if you want to learn these kind of techniques, this series here of basic math, watch the first 100 videos, pick and choose, they're, they're all labeled properly by top, topic, and look for the videos that teach you how to multiply and how to divide in a quick way, and work through those problems and you will get a hang of it. It's very simple. We have done quite a few of these problems like this in this series. You just have to go and look for them. As I said, you don't, you, you needn't go to 200, just watch the first 100, and even, the, even in the first 100, you don't have to watch all 100 of them. There are some topics that you will find there that are that will not appear on on, on the on HESI or T's. Just skip those topics and look for the videos that pertain to the topics that you are that you will encounter on on your exam. Let's do number number four. We just go at a slow, relaxed pace. There's no rush. Nobody's timing us. Well, in the real exam they are, but right now we are just learning. Do you understand? Eight hundred and six times. 55. What the hell? I'm not going to do 806 times 55. I'm too lazy. Let's just keep it simple, okay? Let's multiply. Let's multiply 800 times 50. That should be close enough. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's a matter of seconds. 8 times 8 times 5 is 40. So that takes care of 8 times 5. That represents 8 times 5. And now count how many zeros we have. We have 800, which has two zeros, and we have 50, which has another zero. So we just take three more zeros. The next thing we have to ask ourselves is, is that an overestimation or is that an underestimation? It is quite alright to estimate in the exam. It is not only quite alright, but that is a must. You must do that in order for you to save time and in order to take the exam in an efficient manner. It is vital that you do that. Estimating is fine and dandy, but at all time, at all times, you must be fully cognizant whether you are underestimating or overestimating. Do you understand? You must be fully cognizant of whether you are underestimating or overestimating. We are given 806, we pretended it was 800. We are given 55, we pretend it's 50. So clearly this is an underestimation. Correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly more than 40,000. Correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly more than 40,000. Before I forget it and before we get going, because at the end I know I will forget it, we learned the word cognizant long time ago in our vocabulary lessons. And I'm going to tell you the day number where we learned it in, in the event that you are interested in improving your vocabulary as well. And I see no reason why you wouldn't be. Not just, not just for this exam, but for for life in general. Cognizant. Oh, day, oh, we did it on day number 13. Day 13. Just type in, just type in vocabulary words. Vocabulary words, day 13, the video will pop right up. Watch the video and learn to, learn to think. Let's do it now, shall we? Now what we're doing here is purely for, for, for learning purposes as far as the exam is concerned. We're going to pick the answer choice that's slightly more than 40,000 and that, sh that should suffice. 55, 5 times 6, 6 fives are 30. So that's 30 because this is just 0, so it's not good to think it's just going to be 30. And 8 fives are 40. And we multiply by 5 one more time. It's not going to change something. It's going to be the same as before. So it's going to be 40, 30, except 40 is going to start here, 40, 30. The correct answer is 44,330, and we said that it's going to be 40,000. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to refine this thing, we could have actually refined it a little bit better. Instead of living in such crude manner, we could have refined it. This is how you'll refine it. Okay, listen very carefully. 800 times 50, 800 times 50 is 40. Now, do you know what 800... You know what 800 times 10 is? 800 times 10, of course, of course you know it is 8,000. What about 800 times 5? 800 times 5 would be 4,000. You see we have 55. We don't have 50. 
we took we took 5800 we should have taken 5500 in our estimate which would have been even closer five more 800s five more 800s is half of 10 800s is 8000 so five more 800 would have been 4000 we should have actually we could have actually not should have but we could have refined it a little bit in which case we would have come very close to the real answer which is this right here this is a very good estimation that was a rough estimation but that is good enough for the exam there is only going to be one answer choice that is going to be slightly more than 40,000 in vast majority of the cases. Now, every once in a while, every uh, once in a blue moon, if you come across that there are two answer choices which are slightly more than 40,000, then you do some additional refinement as we did just now. This, this additional refinement, do, you do it when it is absolutely necessary, not for the hell of it. Do you understand? Not for the fun of it. The idea is to get the highest score possible with the least amount of work that you can put in there. That's the idea. Number five. Question number five. See if you can do question number five yourself. See if you can do the estimation yourself. Go ahead. Same idea. Pause the video and see if you can do it yourself. Same logic, same philosophy, same rationale and see what happens. We are told in number five, 795, 795 times 14. Well, again, very simple, 800 times 14, 800 times 14 is what we're going to do first, because that will be a very nice estimation. Let's see what we can do. 114, 4 times 0 is 0, this is 0, 8 fours are, 8 fours are 32. Finally, 0, 0, and then 1 times 8 is 8. We get 11,000, 11,200, 11,200. Now, if you like, you can leave it like this or you can refine it. The refinement is very simple. Listen very carefully. The refinement is very simple. The reason I keep looking at this thing is because I don't like the way I set it up here. It's, I just don't like it. Let, let, if, you, if you let me redo it, I'll do, I'll do it again the way I would like to have it done. Let's redo it. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. This is the right answer, but there's a better way. The better way is this way. We know we have to multiply 800 times 14. So what you do is just multiply 14 times 8. Instead of doing it in an idiotic way like I just did, 8 for the 32, 2, carry 3, 8 ones are 8, plus 3 is 11. And now you ask yourself, you tell yourself that it is not 8, it is 800. So you stick two zeros. 11,200. 11,200. You can leave it like this or you can do a little bit of refinement. We, were not, we do not have 800, we do not have 800 14s, we have 795 14s. We have added 5 extra 14s. We have added 5 extra 14s. If you were to take away that 5 extra 14s, the answer that we will get will be the precise answer. 5 14s, 5 14s are 70. How do we know 5 14s are 70? It's very simple. 10 14s. 10 14s are going to be 140. That's very simple. Very simple to see that 10 times 14 is 140. Well, if 10 14s are 140, that's how we speak, so we'll understand the language. 10 14s are, R means equal. R is, were, those words means equal. 10 14s are 140, therefore 5 14s must be 70. Just subtract 70 from it and what you will have is the precise answer. This, this is 100 for, this, this is 814, this is 814, this amount, 11,200. If you were to take away 5 14s from it, what we will end up is 795 14. Let's subtract it. So here we'll get 30, and this will become 1. 11,130 is going to be the precise, exact answer. Now, if you like, you can do it here and, and confirm it just, just for learning purposes. In the real exam, we could have stopped here or we could have gone one more step. It's up to you. Let's do it here. 5 fours are 20, 2, uh, 20, 0, carry 2. 9 fours are 36, 36 plus 2 is 38, 8, carry 3. 7 fours are 28, 28 plus 3 is 31. And now we have to multiply it by 1. Multiplying it by 1, we're going to get 795, nothing to it. Just write down 795, don't make a fuss about it. And it should be this amount, it should be the same amount as this one. So we get 0 here. 8, five is a, 8 plus 5 is 13, 3, carry 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 9 is 11, 1, carry 1, 7 plus 3 is, 3 plus 7 is 
3, 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 1 is 11. 11,130, just like we did here. No different. Do you see that? Let's do the very last one, number 6. When I, so I say very last one because it's the very last one in the video. There are four more that they're asking for, but we're not going to do them together. Otherwise, the video is going to be too long. The very last one is very easy. That's number six is 999 nine, nine times 12, which is very simple, very simple, very straightforward. 999, 999 times 12 would have to be same as 1000 times 12 minus a 12. You take a thousand twelve and you subtract one twelve from it. If you have a thousand twelve and you subtract one twelve from it, what you will end up is nine hundred ninety nine twelve. That's all there is. So thousand times twelve is twelve thousand, and you subtract have to subtract twelve from it. Now in the real exam, you don't even have to do this part. You just simply have to realize that the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly less than that. It's very simple. If you subtract ten from it, this will become nine ninety. This will become nine eighty eight. That's all it is. Let's do it out. But I'm not going to do it. Out. It's, it's, if you were to subtract 10, instead of a 12,000, it would have been 11,990. It's not going to be 11,990, it's going to be 11,988. But this, this is not necessary. The part that we just there is not necessary. Just understand, just understand that when you subtract 12 from it, the answer is going to be approximately, the answer is going to be approximately, you just take 12,000 and multiply, subtract 10 from it, it's going to be 12, so 11,990 is a damn good estimate. We're supposed to subtract 12, just subtract 10. That's a very good estimate. That's the real answer. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.